entspannt, inspiriert in den Business-Alltag starten mit dem Online-Ideen-Frühstück hier aus der Aktie am Brandenburger Tor. Jetzt auch im Online-Format hier aus dem Live Central Studio, wie immer mit unserem Expertengast. Wir haben das Toastbrot-Rezept der Woche. Wir schalten uns in die Homeoffices. Wir werden miteinander Dialog führen. Ich freue mich, wenn Sie dabei sind beim 30 Minuten Ideen Frühstück. Good morning and welcome everybody to our live stream, to our Ideenfrühstück online in the Axica in Berlin. Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Herzlich willkommen zu unserem Livestream zum Ideenfrühstück online aus der Axica. We have many international guests today. And this is why we're going to present mainly in English. Yeah? We have guests from all over Europe and we even have guests from the US. So it's uh, in the US, it's middle of the night now, and we know how that feels. So special thanks for joining us and for being awake. Today, our topic is having a presence in virtual meetings. We're gonna boost your presence in virtual meetings. How does it work being present in virtual meetings? There are a lot of gimmicks and tricks that we'll be talking about. And uh, I'm looking forward to welcome our expert guests in a few minutes. It's Kaiser Alve Richter. She is executive coach and Heute Journal TV moderator in Germany. In a few minutes. Beforehand, I'd like to welcome our physically live here guests in the Axica. Welcome everybody, great to have you here. Das, das fühlt sich an wie so eine Samstagnachtshow, ja? Also, like a Saturday night a primetime show. And dear online guests, as you can see, we have very friendly and open people in the audience. And they all like to welcome you online from Berlin. Three, two, one. Das ist schön, oder? Ja, wir können jetzt leider nicht euren Applaus hören da zu Hause in den Homeoffices und eure Begeisterung vom Bildschirm, aber wir können es spüren, dass ihr alle dabei seid. So special thanks to the Axica team inviting us today and making it possible to produce this Ideenfrühstück in this incredible online studio, the Live Central Studio, and uh, being the host of this hybrid production. And this is why I'm happy to welcome for the Axica, Axica's YouTube anchor man and consultant, Mark Felsten. Mark, welcome, Mark, from the Axica. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It's great to be here. <laughs> Yeah, you are well known, obviously. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so, Mark, um, it's the first time that we produce a hybrid event in the Axica. That means we have people. What is a, a hybrid event? Means part of the audience is here, part of the audience is online, and the third part missed the date. <laughs> yeah. But do you know where all our participants are located? So, where are our, all our guests online from? Goodness me, Bernard. Well, I know for a fact that we have a large following, the UK, US, obviously, English-speaking, French, Italy, and then we go into some of the, uh, the African countries in the north, some of the eastern countries, Scandinavia, we shouldn't also forget as well, basically across all the five continents. No doubt about it. And you are connected to all those uh, participants? Well, not all of them, obviously, but some of them, yes. Yeah. And what you do is uh, you are... You produce videos, like uh, short trailers? We have been producing a range of infotainment videos, so to speak, where we've been explaining to guests, as we have seen today, the hygienic precautions you need to make, what a wonderful uh, venue the Axica is anyway, but how well they are prepared for the next events or for live events to start taking place again. Yeah. 
And I know everybody is curious to see one of those videos right now. So we picked a short scene, only one minute. Um, yeah, experiencing you as a presenter. And this video scene will also give us an impression where exactly the Axica is located in Berlin. Super. Yeah. So enjoy Mark and one of his videos. Here we are again in front of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin and the Axica event venue for the third in our current amazing video series about the Axica venue and what it can do. Axica has been holding online streaming events for over two years now, very innovative, but completely in trend now in these special times. So we're going to go inside today and see how they've been doing it, what they can do today, and look in front of the camera as well as behind the scenes. So stick around for the next couple of minutes and come with me. I've known this building for over 15 years, sometimes intimately, but every day I come here, I have to stop and take a look at this building, this stunning Frank Geary sculpture. Today we're going to look downstairs where they're filming some of the live stream, but also we can do live stream from inside that plenum. Fantastic. Fantastic. Fantastic, Mark Hanks. <laughs> I love that. Sorry, I love that bit where I say I've known this building intimately. I think it's like, what the hell is that? Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, and, and what I see in the video that that you all also have to deal with having a presence in front of a camera. So what are your personal hints and uh, and tips for being present in front of a camera? Well, first of all, I have to mention, ladies and gentlemen, that I've always been told that I have, unlike yourself, a face for radio, so that's, <laughs> that's never really helped. But one of the good things is, as you know as well, it's teamwork, it's not just me, it's what goes on behind the camera, and I'm gonna welcome what has helped really a lot, is having a great cameraman to work with from the Axica. Johannes, come here as well, please. Welcome, Johannes, your round of applause. <laughs> yeah. So we like, there's a certain chemistry which really helps. And as you've shown already, moving around really helps as well. But our only little trick is, and many people don't know this when they saw my videos, is we do a bit of a Ronaldo warm-up. Warm up. We get the energy high. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can go in front of the camera and it sounds really cool. All right? So. I didn't see you warm up like that this morning, but you've got a lot of natural energy anyway, so you don't need to. So I love your warm-up, and we'll be doing this all together after the show, <laughs> getting crazy. So, Mark, um, thank you very much for being here, for producing this, um, this video. And I'm going to tell you, we have a surprise for you at the end of the show using your 60-second video. We, yeah, we prepared a surprise. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure I like surprises. Not that kind, anyway. Thank you, thank you Mark Telstead. It's the first time that uh, we are producing this Ideenfrühstück as a hybrid event. We have about 500, 600 people in the live stream. We have our guests here in the studio. And after the live stream, after 30, in about 30 minutes, we're going to start a Zoom network meeting. This is what we always do to bring you together. We want to connect our online participants with our physically live for your guests. And we invite you to take part in this networking. It is hosted and moderated by my colleague, Sandra Herz. She's a meeting expert in Hamburg. And Sandra, maybe we reach you in your office already now. So here's Sandra Herz. Hi, Sandra. Sandra, good to see you. And what do we expect in our Zoom networking? Ich kann synchronen Lippen lesen. Sandra sagt jetzt, hallo Bernhard. Wir freuen uns auf euch im Netz. Wir kennen uns sehr gut und es ist immer wieder ein Spiel, das wir online treiben, um unsere Präsenz boosten zu lassen. Lippen lesen. Also wenn Sie das mal erleben in einem... 
in einem Online-Meeting und Sie hören den Gegenpart nicht. Sandra, bewegt doch mal die Lippen, ich synchronisiere dich einfach. Hallo, everybody, I'm glad to have you in the Zoom-Meeting after the show. Yes, you are welcome. We're going to connect you all, our online participants, with our participants here in the studio. This is what Sandra wanted to say, and you get a big round of applause from all our participants here in the studio. We are curious, we want to know, dear online participants, um, how actually you are using online conferencing and hybrid events. So uh, let's do a short voting. And my question for you is, how often do you take part in virtual meeting using video? How often do you take part in virtual meetings using video, whatever kind of channel. So we're going to open our voting session on our microsite. You are invited to answer this question online. And you have 10 seconds to now decide for answer A, daily, B, weekly, C, monthly, or D, not yet at all. Yeah, please enter your answer now. Daily, weekly, monthly, or not yet. This is alternative D. Okay. And while you are entering your answer, I'm going to ask our, our live physical guests here, who in the audience uses video conferencing every day, being present via video by show of friends. Okay, 70, 80% weekly at least. Yeah third, once a month, yeah, one or two, not at all, nobody, okay? This is almost what we expected, so let's see what our online participants voted for, how often do you take part in virtual meetings, and we have more than 50% taking parts in virtual meetings weekly. So the majority takes part at least weekly in a virtual meeting, daily 36%, monthly or not yet, only 3 and 4%. So this is what we expected, that you, due to the crisis, started to take part in virtual meetings frequently, that you're using this medium and that you might be interested to improve, to boost your presence in this virtual meetings. And it's a pleasure for me to have our expert guests in our live stream now. And I'd like to welcome executive presence coach and German TV moderator from the Heute Journal, Kai Sölve Richter. Welcome, Kai Sölve. Good morning, Bernhard. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Your applause. Thank you. <laughs> It's actually it's a pleasure for us to have you uh, in the live stream, especially as I know that you are on vacation now and, and you found, found the time to get into our live stream. So where exactly are you? Oh, I'm at the beautiful Lago Maggiore in northern Italy, which might sound a little bit better than it actually is because um, we are having a water damage. So my warming up this morning was like sweeping the floors and drying ceilings and I even got a picture for you. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. It was this morning standing on the bed trying to dry up the ceiling. But the view makes up for it. If you want to have a look, take it outside. Hold on. Wow, that looks yeah, beautiful. That's my window. Yeah. I would accept a water damage image if I had a terrace like uh, this. No, no, no. <laughs> you you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So, I um, didn't even have coffee this morning. So. You haven't had coffee this morning? I'm sure you had coffee this morning. No way. <laughs> Sorry. I had to sweep. Come to the Axi car. We have brilliant coffee here. But <laughs> okay, I'll be there in 10, 10 hours, I'm afraid, yes. We'll, we'll, be, wa we'll be waiting for you. <laughs> and Kaiserwe, we, we have a nice tradition in our Ideenfrühstück. We always start our expert talk 
with the famous two Toastboat Fragen. Kaiserwe, two Toastboats, and you have time to answer as long as the toasts are in our toaster. Okay, I like it dark. <laughs> I'll try to. So my first question is we want to learn a little bit more about you uh, personally. So I'm sure you were not born as an executive coach or as a TV host. What were the experiences, the tipping points in your life and in your biography? Let's start now. All right. I'd say maybe a moment that by then seemed quite unfortunate. I missed an audition. The audition for the super popular acting class in my school and I missed it because I was still in my exchange year in the United States. So I had to pick the uh, other class, which was, let's face it, the loser class. It was a radio class where we learned how to produce a radio broadcast. And it turned out that I liked it so much that the local radio station just didn't get rid of me anymore. And that's the reason actually why I started my journalistic career in the age of 17 already, because I, uh, I was a loser who, who was to it, yeah. Oh, I still have time, well. Obviously. I, I like your toaster. <laughs> Maybe I can use this time for the next question then. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, we give you uh, time points, you can use the time. And sometimes, actually, I'm, I'm amazed about this toaster. The, the longest time was about 40 second minutes uh, that a toaster needed to come out again. Let me check this toaster. So, here we have the toast. <laughs> Thanks for your first question, Kaiser. Okay, second question, it's, it's still on, it's still working, the toast. And my second question is, I'm sure that in your, uh, even in your like TV, very highly professional contexts, there are many funny things happen in front of a camera. So uh, maybe you can give us some examples of funny experiences in your professional career now. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right, there are many of them. Um, okay, okay, I know. I was in the middle of a live broadcast when I realized, okay, bun. <laughs> no, did, yeah. did your toast just come up there? <laughs> yes, but, but this was the time of the first toast, so we for, sure, ah, okay. we for sure give you the time of the second toast starting now. Good. All right. So I was in the middle of this broadcast when uh, I realized I wasn't alone in the studio. There was a cleaning woman, obviously unaware of the fact that we were being live on air because she was sweeping the floor, moving backwards towards the camera. And I figured, oh my God, she'll be right in front of the camera when the, the camera is on. So what I did was I started to speak faster and faster and faster and it did work out the very second the clean woman reached the camera, the red light went off, and when it turned on again, like 15 seconds later, she was out of sight, still absolutely unaware of the fact that she was so close of the, to being famous. And yeah, still laugh about that one. I think it's one of the most funny things. <laughs> And I really uh, had, to, had a hard time not, not to love my head off. <laughs> yeah, so may maybe we can provide some cleaning stuff from the Axe account stage in a second. Kaiser, thanks for, for the start. The toaster is still burning, but to, to avoid an alarm, I take the toast pot out now. <laughs> thanks for your answers. And uh, Kaiser, our topic is being present in virtual meetings. And my first question is, if virtual meetings were a Hollywood film genre, what kind of genre would that be? <laughs> I really like your question because it does remind me of actually two genres. Um, experimental art movies, sometimes funny, sometimes weird, sometimes endless boredom, and horror movies. And I'm not even joking about this one, not only because of scary colleagues or something, but um, because of all those little technical disturbances we experienced during video calls, like 
sound delays, video lapses, frozen images, um, shaking cameras. That's actually the same thing that horror movie directors use deliberately to, to frighten people. Um, maybe you remember the Blair Witch Project, which was supposed to be the scariest movie ever, like 20 years ago. This movie is full of those errors and they are used by the director to, to scare people. So if you feel exhausted or stressed after a long day of video calls, uh, yeah, no surprise here. So that is what happens in virtual meetings. You were talking about freezing pictures, for example. This is what we experience in our broadcast now, maybe depending on the internet connection in Italy, I don't know, but we, we have a uh, vivid impression of what you are talking about. <laughs> yeah? and, uh, of, but we can hear everything uh, you're saying very clearly. So you are presenting news in the German Heute Journal, big TV uh, news magazine and how do you manage to be like present on the point nevertheless what your mood isn't uh, never never uh, whatever happens around the world so how do you manage that to be present in front of a camera camera mm -hmm. oh you're absolutely right even after almost 30 years of routine there are still lots of moments that would give me the jitters if I hadn't learned to to deal with it somehow so what I do in those moments is um, at least one of those three things. Uh, first of all, I use the studio entrance as a barrier. The bad mood has to stay out. It's a rule. <laughs> and two, after, behind the store, there's like the best studio crew ever. And I always, I always have a chat with them before the show. And the worse my mood, the more I chat always about nice things. This works miracles for me at least. Um, and if I'm in a really bad mood, I use the way to the studio that takes me about three minutes to sing a funny song. Have you ever tried to sing a funny song when you're angry or sad or in another bad mood? It's almost impossible, but that also means it's almost impossible to be in a bad mood when you're singing a funny song, and it really helps. And when the opening is starting, my mood is usually really fine. Kaiser Richter, I love this explanation. What do you think will be my next question? <laughs> Gonna inviting you to sing a funny song, <laughs> but, but you, no, actually, no actually, you don't. You, you don't. don't you don't want to hear me sing. I, I, I use a staircase. There's never anybody, so um, I, I never sing aloud. Oh, <laughs> but then, but, but maybe you tell us which song it is. It is a song everybody knows and everybody could use. Uh, different songs, but very often I use Pippi Langstrumpf. Very good, Pippi Langstrumpf. I, I love that one. <laughs> and yeah, people always look at me when I sing that song. When I sing that song, but. I love Pippi Langstrumpf, so even thinking of Pippi Langstrumpf, having the image of Pippi Langstrumpf in my head, makes a good mood. So and, that is... And, and if you don't want to sing, you can whistle. Sometimes I go like... And this has a great effect. When I go into the control room, I always do to say hello, it seems like I'm so relaxed. They are like, oh, how can you whistle in this moment? It's, it's so stressy and, and you're so relaxed because you, you're still... Good, good effect, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good side effect. <laughs> and that's good to know, and we all, when we see the next Heute Journal, we all know what you did five minutes before you appeared in front of the camera. <laughs> so <laughs> virtual meetings are a little different to, um, to news formats, and how, how can we ensure a flow of information, how can we avoid misunderstandings in virtual meetings where we have a lot of dialogue? Mm -hmm. um, in order to answer that, maybe we should look at one of the reasons why there's so much information lost in the virtual space. Um, one, one reason is that lots of visual and, and audible information gets lost. Like if you have all your counterparts in those tiny little windows in front of you, you don't see as many things as in, in a present meeting. Like, like nodding, frowning, uh, shaking heads, you don't hear things like mm -hmm, ah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, 
there are a lot of clues missing that would give you some kind of feedback and this leads to insecurity. Uh, so what you should do is always um, seek conf confirmation. Um, ask, ask your folks, um, do you like what I just say, uh, what I just said? Do you, do you hate it? What do you think? Did you even get it? Did you even hear me? So you, you want to make, um, make that sure. Um, so what is, what is very important to have a clear structure and rules. Um, it's very important in virtual meetings, even more important than in present meetings. Um, I give you an example. If people talk across each other in a normal, uh, an analog meeting, it's annoying. If people do that in a virtual meeting, you don't get a word, the information is lost. So rules are important. And three, repetition. Um, don't hesitate to say important things twice and email the important points to everybody who needs to know. That would be my advice. Thanks for that repetition. Uh, what I'd like to talk about is repetition, <laughs> Kaiser Richter. And uh, I know that you um, that you founded a, a coaching institute, Richter und Münzner, and you are coaching executive presence, not only reduced uh, like to presence in virtual meetings, but um, a holistic approach to executive presence. So, what is behind this this phenomenon of having a presence but many people think they could pimp their performance by by applying like body language rules open your arms when you welcome your audience and smile when you want to come across as likable um, speak loudly when you want to see him powerful this kind of stuff unfortunately that doesn't really work too well because when you step in front of an audience having like 20 body language rules in your brain, it's occupied. But wouldn't you rather want to use your brain for like, what you want to say? I would. Um, and there's another effect of that. Um, if you pl apply art or use artificial body language, it can never be authentic because it is artificial and your audience will notice at once. Instinctively, they know, oh, there's something awkward about the speaker, and then they lose trust, and that's what you really don't want as a speaker, right? Um, well, there's very interesting brain research about this topic, um, very interesting. Uh, so, what we do as coaches is, we hardly ever give advice like, use this kind of gesture, talk like this. We work on the reasons for poor body language or poor presence. Sometimes we work on the inner stance, sometimes on the content. Very often we, we work on the language. It is one of the best levers ever because, uh, i give you an example. If you use like squishy or wooly language, only buzzwords, what is your voice supposed to do? What, does, what are your hands supposed to do? There's nothing to show actually. But if you, on the contrary, use a vivid language, if you visualize, if you really mean what you're saying, that your body and all of your body will do automatically perfectly the right thing. That's, that's the way we, we work. We, we look behind the actually, um, yeah, the visual effects. Yeah, this is what you're doing with your coaching institute. Contact is on our homepage, www.ideenfrühstück. And Kaiser, I'm sure that there are many questions now, like detailed questions or questions about your work, about being present. And we are going to open up our online Q&A window in a second. And you all in the stream are invited to enter your questions to Kaiser. And for sure, it's also possible we do that beforehand to ask questions here or to pick questions from our guests. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, do we have uh, questions for Kai Zolver? Yeah, we have somebody with a question. And uh, could you please come on stage for a second to, to ask the question? Because you are invited to pick this microphone on the table. And just please go into my moderation position where I was behind the notebook. And you are the moderator now invited to have a talk with Kai Zolve to ask her your questions. Yeah, and I'm gonna drink a coffee. So let's start now. Okay. Hi, Kai Zolve Richter, I'm Nicola Bock. And my question to you is, how do you connect with an audience that you actually don't see? 
Um, yeah, as you know, uh, I have this problem problem like every day because um, as, a, as a news anchor, I don't see my audience either. <laughs> what I do um, is I try to imagine at least someone, a real person who might be listening or watching me right now. Um, and if you have this in your head, if you address him or her directly, um, this helps a lot to you to be present. Um, I, I know some colleagues who always imagine there's George Clooney sitting behind this camera. <laughs> um, every, every colleague has, has his own like, recipe for that. And um, if you are talking to your audience, like in a video call, when you really are connected with people, um, just address them, say their names, ask them questions, um, ask them, did you uh, get what I'm saying? Do you like it? What do you think about this? So you need much more empathy and interaction in virtual communication. And where do I look when I want to follow what you say, when I think I need to look into the camera? <laughs> Yeah, good question. So if you are, uh, Nicola, you as a moderator, so um, we... Do I look into the red light? Yeah, you can, okay. you have to, optimal, you have to, to look into the camera, right into the camera's eye and visualize either George Clooney or any other <laughs> f uh, character you like to visualize. And we have this control screen just beside the camera so that as a moderator you can see your dialogue guests and should try to, to actually act and speak directly into the camera. So you try that again, you could have question a question is actually very, very good because we all know hardly anyone looks into the camera in during a video call, right? Everybody just looks on his or her screen and this is like really, um, you don't connect with people. Um, the eye contact is, is, is one of the most important ways to connect with and to people. So um, my advice would be look into the camera and every once in a while check on the screen um, to, to see the reactions of, of your counterparts. Thank you. I guess I need some training on that, but um, yeah, I will exercise. Yes. <laughs> Thank I you very I much. I love to come to it right away. It's, it's training. Absolutely. Thank you, Nicola. Big round of applause. <laughs> you can just put the microphone on that. Thank you very much. And we're going to pick some questions from our online Q&A. Is the Q&A window opened? Yes, then you might now key in, enter your questions into our Q and online Q&A session. And yeah, by the way, if you want to learn more about executive presence, I'd like to present Kaiser's new book, Executive Presence More Than Body Language. It's, yeah, it's printed right now. We, we don't have a physical book here, but I printed out the cover. <laughs> And it's even better to have you live in the chat. So please send your questions for Kai Solve Richter now. And we had Nicola live on stage and we have your presence in our online chat. So Kai Solve, what about your water damage? Is somebody going to fix it right now? Uh, yeah, we have to call someone. Um... But first, I have to write a vocabulary down in Italian, so I'm able to do the phone call. My husband now is sweeping the floor right now. I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, I can imagine that you need special vocabulary to ask somebody to fix uh, water damage. Um, but, but you're speaking uh, many languages, don't you? You are like, um, uh, you, you are... It's some kind of hobby, yes. It's, uh, I, I've started with, of course, English, um, French, and... Spanish, um, now Italian, and Mandarin, yeah. For six years I've been learning Mandarin, but oof, it's hard. <laughs> okay, and um, questions. You can enter your questions into on our microsite now. One question, how do you uh, arrange yourself in a TV studio if you have a co-moderator like you have or if you work together with Klaus Kleber or other colleagues um, do you fix a script or is it like uh, um, is it an, an intuition thing to, to share the 
um, the presence? It depends on the broadcast. We have broadcast where you speak freely, like if we have breaking news, it's, it's uh, an out of use of no use, of course, because you always have to see, okay, what's going on? And then you have to be able to say everything without a script, that's, that's clear. But the normal TV broadcast, the news broadcast, like the Heute Journal, uh, we actually do have scripts. And um, this, this is important because we really pay attention to the wording to be exactly right. Is this a truth or not? And sometimes it's about tiny little words that are different that make a, different, a, a difference. And second, um, it's about timing because if a broadcast is supposed to uh, last 10 minutes, it'll have, to, it'll have to, to last 10 minutes, not 10 minutes and two seconds. <laughs> so uh, if you have the script, um, the timing is, is more, more precise. That's the second reason. Oops, sorry. Thanks, Kai Sölve. Um, I have a, a feedback from our technical crew here that not everybody in the online stream um, is enabled to enter questions, but now obviously it works. One last question online. Um, is gesture important? Is it helpful to use gesture to be more present, like some people do in front of a camera, being present? Is that helpful? Mm. Well, as I try to explain, um, it's not about the gesture in the first place, it's about your stance, the content. Um, a gesture can be too much or just right, depending on the content, what you're saying. So if you really know what you're saying, if you really mean it, if you use picture, if you visualize, your body will, um, the exact amount of, of body language or gestures that are just right. Don't think about your gestures, rather, uh, focus on your content and use the vivid language and then you won't have to pay attention to your gestures at all. Everything will be just fast perfect. Kaiser Richter, thanks for being our guest in the Ideenfrühstück. Thanks for answering questions. Everybody's invited to get into contact with you. Richter und Münzner Executive Presence. All contacts on our homepage www.ideenfrühstück.de. And we are not giving over to the weather forecast now. Nevertheless, the last sentence is yours. All right, now let me first thank you for inviting me. It's been a real pleasure, pleasure to be in the Ideen Frühstück. And now, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Our comedy guest is coming up soon. Time for our comedy guests. It's uh, another... Uh, funny tradition of the Indian Frühstück to invite a comedy guest from the Berlin comedy scene. And our uh, comedian today is a comedian. She was born in the US, came to Berlin in 1994 and started the first English language stand-up comedy night ever here in Germany. She's a coach for presenting in English and using humor. Please welcome Tammy Ingram. Tammy. Tammy, great, great to have you here. Ah, I'm glad I'm here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. As a comedian, you, you started comedy in the U.S., you, you came to Germany. Is, uh, is our humor different in Germany? Well, as you know, humor is a little bit different in Germany. I started my comedy in the U.S. for 10 years, then I uh, in San Francisco, and I think I got hit over the head when I visited a, a German restaurant because I woke up and I was here in Germany. So I don't know how I got here. But I'm here, and I've been working with German uh, comedy for more than 20 years years here. Uh, I started it with only five people and we had at least eight comedians. So we had more comedians than we had audience members. So uh, 
Yes, uh, and German comedy is cabaret, and that's that's funny. But and 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 British comedy and American comedy, we like to laugh at ourselves. The German is more of uh, like to laugh at other people. So, uh, I, you know what? The outcome is still the same: laughter. That's important. Yes, and that is what unites us all. Yeah. So, and if you have more people on stage than in the audience, this is called hi an hybrid event. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a test. You know, you have to be brave. You have to get out there and say, "I want my shows." Now, my shows are between 100 and 150 people. But I started with just five people. Yeah. Yes. And and you're teaching comedy, so um, yes, and I you am. have like you, you also have an, an online uh, uh, business yes, teaching people comedy and enable them to go on st on stage. What is the format? Well, um, I'm right now. I'm teaching people uh, to come on stage and have a presence, like a stage presence, and that takes a lot of self confidence. What you don't like about yourself, bring it to the audience. You guys are very smart. You can tell my weak points, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. So if you have something, for instance, a bald head, you just tell somebody, my head is bald, but my face is beautiful. So, you know, you have to use what you have, and the audience will connect. And I think that's important. Use what you have. You have a beautiful voice. You also did radio moderation. You do yes. voiceover. Yes, I do voiceovers. And here comes our surprise oh. for Mark Feltz. Oh my so, goodness! So, as you do voiceover, I'd like to invite you to to improvise a voiceover. <laughs> on the Mark Felstead Axi Club promotion <laughs> video. Mark, <Yeah. laughs> I'm gonna love it, Mark. And I just want to tell everybody uh, the name of my. Uh, before I begin, the name of my uh, class is called "To Be or Not to Be Funny." So remember to key in. Okay. So I'm going to make fun of poor Mark. Uh, you know, Mark, I love you. I just met you. I love you, but. Nothing personal. Okay. So let's imagine Mark were a female presenter and let's see the same 60 seconds of Mark Zaxica presentation video. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello. Yes, we are in front of the Brandenburg Tour and in front of the Axia Congress Center. And the first thing I want to tell you is that my pants are tight. My pants are tight. My shirt is tight. I'm sweating, I can't see, these glasses are too big, and the sweat is going down into my butt. I don't even have a butt. But you know what? Before we go in, I just want you to, when I turn around, please don't look at my butt. Don't, oh, excuse me. Okay, here is, I always ask myself, what the hell is this? It looks like a horse's nostrils is opened up. I don't know what the heck that is. Or it looks like something. I don't know what that is. But look at the people down here. They're so beautiful. Inside the horse's nose. Loving it. Oh, don't sneeze. Achoo! Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Tommy Ingram. You like that? <laughs> Tommy Ingram. <laughs> Oh, I love comedy. Every day, I love it. And tell me, as I know that all comedians laugh, excellent catering, and be perform the better, the better the catering is, yes. we prepared a little surprise. Andre from the Axica Kitchen, as every week in our Ideen Frühstück, prepared a special recipe idea from the Axica Kitchen. Okay. Welcome, Andre, and please let us know, Andre, what oh. have you been preparing? Hello. 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 Um, today we have prepared Egg Benedict. It's a famous dish and wonderful. Egg Benedict, and that is, uh, yeah, Andre will bring it into your dressing room now. You can enjoy uh, Andre's Egg Benedict. Have a, oh. of, have a lot of fun, and uh, thanks for being here, Tammy Ingram. Thanks again. Thank you so much, and Thank Pat. you, Andre, for the rest Thank of you, today. everybody. I'll enjoy. Thanks, you too. Should I take it? Ah, oh, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> yeah, you will enjoy it. You will enjoy it. Andre and Tammy Ingram. And Tammy Ingram's contact also on our homepage for sure. Thanks for being here, Tammy. So, 
You all are uh, invited to join our Zoom networking with Sandra Herz in a, in a second. And uh, dear international guests, um, it was a pleasure for us to have you on the live stream. Thanks again to our guests in the studio. Our message is that hybrids format don't have to be a horror genre, that hybrid events can connect people and can cope and uh, yeah, make the best of the situation that we have right now. So everybody in the online stream, find your Zoom link now in your email. Everybody in the live audience here in the Axica, you are invited to join and you will find the link in your mail or on our homepage www.ideenfrühstück.de. We, yeah, we posted the link uh, as a backup on our homepage. Thanks for being our guests in the Ideen Frühstück. Hope to see you again on June the 23rd. That is our next date for our next Ideen Frühstück. My name is Bernhard Wolf, and it was a pleasure for me to be your host. See you, and thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.